Good morning. Today is Monday, May the 1st. It is Labor Day in most countries celebrating this Labor Day holiday. But however, in Northern America, uh, both Canada and United States are not celebrating uh, this particular holiday. So it's Japan. So uh, market condition is going to be very, very thin going into this uh, today's trading. Now let's do a bit of a recap as to what happened last week on Wall Street. We can see that uh, last Thursday we have the release of the first quarter GDP for the United States. It came in a lot worse than expected. Now uh, looking back, we can see that the third quarter GDP for 2022 was at 3.2%, followed by the fourth quarter at 2.6%. And going into the release of the Q1 GDP numbers, market was expecting 2% growth. Uh, so uh, you can see it's 3.2, 2.62%, but the market came in at 1.1%. So that was a disastrous number. So from 3.2, 2.6, 1.1, we can see the US economy, or rather his economic activity has been slowing down very, very sharply. Now on normal day, when you have number like this, it will cause a sell off in the equity market. But not only did US equity not sell off, it actually rallied. And for NASDAQ, it actually went to register the new high for the year. So what is really causing, uh, this very abnormal behavior. So because the uh, this week, uh, tomorrow and the day after the FOMC, which is the Federal uh, Open Market Committee, is going to sit down and talk about uh, interest rates, whether to raise interest rate and if they do, by how much. So before the release of the GD, uh, G, uh, GDP numbers uh, last week, market was expecting the FOMC to actually decide on a uh, uh, 25 basis point or 0.25% uh, interest rates hike. Okay, but once the GDP numbers was released for the first quarter and people look at the number, it was such a horrible number and people have, have beginning to change their mind as to whether the Fed is actually able to hike interest rate in the face of such a sharp uh, uh, slowdown in US economic activ uh, activity. On top of that, we also have news that the First Republic Bank is in trouble and is likely to be wind up. So we have seen last month, uh, not last month, in, uh, in March, we have seen how the banking crisis unfold, uh, whereby we have one, two, three banks collapsing one after the other in, on, on very short notice. And now we have First Republic going to join the rank of the failed bank. So all this is due to the uh, very aggressive rate hike by the Federal Reserve. So now looking back, most market analysts are beginning to see that uh, come Wednesday night, uh, when they're gonna sit down and wait for the FOMC meeting, whether the Federal Reserve may actually pause or even cut interest rates to save the economy. So what we have here is the entire market betting against the Federal Reserve, thinking that it will not uh, stay the course and may actually reverse course. So this is causing equity markets to rise because the idea is very simple. Uh, if the Federal Reserve actually cut rate, most people will take it as a plus uh, uh, and that should boost equity prices. But that is normally true in a bull market when you when when the equity market is in a bull phase, any kind of interest rates okay will actually cause the bull market to accelerate to the upside. But in a period of market uncertainty, which which we are in right now since last year, we can see that uh, a rate cut may not necessarily be bullish for equity market. So I would like to take this with a pinch of salt. Uh, I am not in the camp whereby I think lower interest rate is going to save the equity market. I think it is building the seed for a collapse at some point in time. But for the time being, the market technical momentum seems to be favoring more upside. So if that's the case, we have to go with the momentum, okay? So we can see in the Dow Jones itself, the high is 34,103 on Friday, and this is effectively a very, very high price. Now, now, now take, let's take a look at the daily time frame. When we look at the daily time frame, beginning of the year, not beginning of the year, last year, December, we have a high of 34,712. And right now, we can see that the market is already flirting with last uh, uh, the year's high so far, okay? The high so far this year is 34,342. 34, so at where we are right now on Friday closing 34,103, we are very, very, very close to breaching the year's high. There is a high probability that this high will be taken up and whether the high can be, uh, the market can actually exceed 34,712 is another story. And even if it does, I want to see how the market reacts. Maybe if the market pierced through this level at 34,712 and could not sustain and turn back down again, that could give me the 
signal to go in to sell short okay so in the meantime while the momentum do favor the upside do be careful about chasing this market but if you want to trade short term maybe there's still some opportunity here but this could be the very tail end of it intraday if the market pulls back to 33,000 uh, five, uh, 567 to 33,670 that could be an area of opportunity because that is considering the uh, the, the 50 and 61.8 percent retracements of this entire rally from 33,235 to 34,103. So this area could be an area of opportunity for short-term uh, buying for those who are very keen on scalping. Okay, I'm going to stay away with uh, this equity market on the long side with a 10-foot pole for now. Okay, in the S&P 500, yes, it is the same thing. Uh, for all intent and purposes, you can see that on the daily time frame. Again, we want to take a look at the day time frame. We are already at the cups of taking out the year high. The year high has been traded in February, uh, in the early part of February at 4,195. So where we are closing now, we are only about 25 points away from the all, uh, from the year's high. Can we take this out? I think there's a good possibility this high may not be defensible. Maybe the market momentum will actually see prices continue to search forward beyond the uh, 4,195 high for the year. Okay, where would it go? My immediate target is about 4,264.5. Beyond that, I think there is a possibility this could be the ultimate objective for this move here. Compared to where we are right now to where the market can possibly go, that's another two, 200 over points, okay? So that could be enough incentive for people to want to go in and buy. It's not that you can't just be very, 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 uh, uh, just be very, very, uh, 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 correct aware that this rally here is based on very poor fundamental okay so in the uh, uh the top side here is 4373 to 4517 on the lower time frame let's look at the four hours time frame you can see market if the market pulls back to somewhere between the 50 percent of the rise from 4049 to 4170 it will bring the market to 4109 okay uh, the 4,095 is actually the 61.8% retracement of this entire rise here. So again, technically, there could be some buying interest that's going to be centered between 4,001 area. Okay, do watch out for this possibility here. Whereas in the Nasdaq, now when we look at the Nasdaq, looking from the daily time frame, we can see Nasdaq is already trading at the year's high. Okay, this is the highest it has ever been since when? Uh, since. September last year. Okay, so we are very very near the high here, which was last traded in August last year, which is thirteen thousand seven twenty. So will there be enough to uh, momentum for the market to challenge this? I think there is a very good chance in May. Okay, again, what it does after that is another story. Uh, ultimately, I think the market is probably going to find a top somewhere between fourteen thousand one thirty five to fourteen thousand seven hundred. So this is an area of opportunity for me. I will want to see how the market reacts if and when the market do relatively to this point in time. So are there short term possibility to trade? <coughs> Sorry, I think there is. Just that you got to be very, very careful, okay, between these levels here. So what I do see here, maybe I can show you the one hour time frame to give you a better perspective of the opportunity that you can that you can actually trade. Okay, maybe I adjust this a little bit to show you where the area of opportunity is likely to be. Okay, somewhere between uh, 12,924 uh, to 12, uh, to 13,000. Okay, so if the market do pull back from uh, the high of 13,242. 246 that area here could possibly be an area in which you can find buying interest here okay so do watch out for this level in the meantime the nikkei is still traded this morning we have a rush up to 29,134.65 okay this is based on the one hour time frame you have to show you the daily uh, no, the, 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 the four hours so basically we have a rise here from just below uh, 126 like this level here from below here this is a one 25,662, okay? Uh, the market is probably unfolding in a larger degree three ways. And if this is the case, it could be targeting somewhere at 29,700 to 30,430. So this could be the ultimate objective. But in the meantime, we have a smaller degree rise here, which is unfolding in a three ways. And the market already hit this pocket of prices between 29,000 to 29,500. So possibly near term, we can find some kind of resistance here. But if the market punch to this level, uh, a more difficult area to overcome will be between 30,000 to 30,430, okay? So in the meantime, 
take your cue from there. Over in Hong Kong, the market is closed today as they observe Labor Day. But from what we can see, the drop from 22,700 appears to be incomplete. And I think over the longer term, I think we may see prices continue to slide lower. And the target area is somewhere between 16,000 to, 6, to 17,000. So that will complete a larger degree three wave pullback here. Over in the uh, CSI, which is the Chinese Equity Index, again, the market is not open today, but uh, very similar to the Hang Seng, we can see that this pullback from 4,267 appears incomplete, and for it to actually complete its run, market could be targeting at some point in time the 37,000, uh, no, sorry, 3,760 to 3,940 levels. So this will be an area I think the market may actually finally rest, okay? Uh, over in the energy markets, you can see crude oil, have a very obvious rise on Friday. Let me show you the one hour time frame. So this rush here on Friday was actually very, very persistent from a low of $73.90 all the way to $76.89. And uh, right now it's pulling back. If we see continue to pull back, the area between the 50% pullback and the 61.8% uh, pullback will offer us buying opportunity. I think that will be somewhere between $75 and four cents to $75 and 39 cents so this will be an area of interest to me i have already basically gone long so i want to see how far it can go okay over in the gold market we continue to see gold consolidation maybe i'll show you the four hours time frame so you can see gold having pulled back from 2048 dollars and 80 cents has gone into a corrective pattern and this corrective pattern is getting smaller and smaller and smaller so there's a possibility the market is doing another set of uh, uh, a uh, triangle or some kind of consolidation here so top side potential is about somewhere around 2009 to 2015 dollars uh, and then the downside is the market continues to unfold to the downside to complete this three wave i think the market could be targeting 1914 dollars and 1933 dollars so basically 1915 to 1933 could be the ultimate uh, low here but in the meantime don't forget that uh, 1950 is where the market started to rally so if the market do come back here first maybe we're going to get some kind of short term support and do watch out for uh, reversal signal either at the 1950 or somewhere in between the bracket of 1115 to 1933 dollars over in the silver market, we are seeing the same thing of consolidation. The market high is $26.09 and the low trade is $24.50 thereabout. And the market has gone into a sideway consolidation. Right now, the market is smack between two zones. Okay, uh, I think the market is likely to find resistance somewhere between the $25.30 and $25.50. To On the downside, if the market goes down first without uh, without rebounding, I think the market could be targeting $23.71 to $24.05. So between these two areas, see where the market price goes to first. If it goes up first, maybe it's good to sell. If it comes down here, maybe it's good to buy. So this is what I think is going to happen. Over in the uh, dollar index, we can see dollar index actually rallied to 10204 on Friday before having a, a, a very sharp pullback. So by and large, you can see the dollar index having bottom up at 142 is probably tracing out as three wave rally. And this market uh, has so far failed to go to its ideal target of 10226 to 10262. So basically, I still think the market have a possible potential to go up to these levels and once the market go into this level we will see the reaction here the first barrier to overcome will be 102.48 followed by 103.02 okay so between these two levels here the market may get some kind of a reaction and that is just what i think the market may do okay i'm basically long the dollar index i want to see how far it will go okay over in the currency we can see sterling met continue to edge higher to 125.84 on Friday. And now let's look at it from a larger perspective from the daily time frame. You can see that the sterling has been very, very strong. And based on what we can see, the market is very bullish. So if this is the case, the market near term support is probably going to be somewhere around 127 to 127.45 levels. Okay. So if the market do pull back, now let me refer you to the one hour time frame. If the market do have an a, a immediate short term pullback, uh, the area of interest to me will be 124.50 to 124.75. Between these 25 points uh, pip range, perhaps you can get some kind of buying opportunity before the market rest, uh, rally beyond one, one, 126. Over in the uh, euro versus the dollar, it has a very different structure. Now let's go back and see the daily time frame. So you can see that by and large, you can see euro is also going higher, okay, uh, very, very strongly. 
So it does not look complete. Maybe it will have to continue to charge higher. For the time being, I think somewhere between 1.1380 to 1.1535, the market will hit a pocket of prices, uh, which I think will actually entice seller to come back in again. So in the meantime, we look, let's watch what happens. Okay. Uh, I do not want to pick up position in Euro dollar for now after having been kicked out of a very nice short position uh, recently. So over here, we can see Aussie is trading very much in a sideways pattern between 0 0.6565 to 0 0.6805. So this pattern here looks like it's incomplete. By and large, the market is in a bear market uh, from 0 0.7160 all the way down to 0 0.6565. I think this trend here is incomplete. There's a very good chance it will continue to go below 0 0.6565 towards the 0 0.6. 6.070 to 0 0.62 even levels. Okay, so this is my overall target for this move. Over in the dollar versus the yen, uh, this is something that I may still be interested to sell. Uh, we can see that the dollar yen is actually very bearish from 151.94 all the one to 127.20. The market looks incomplete. We have a what looks to be potentially three wave rally. So let's see what happens. Okay, for the time being, the market low of this for this one is one 129.64. The high trade this morning is 136.92. So again, based on the overall look, it does look like it is a sell going forward. But in the near term, the market may have enough momentum to actually try the upper end. Let's see whether the market can actually go up beyond 137. Uh, 120, 137, 138 is actually where my target is. Right? Okay. So if the price goes into this bracket of prices, I'll be looking out for selling possibility here. Uh, maybe there's going to be some short term availability of sell uh, signal here so i will have to watch in the meantime i think the, the the opportunity is not in the currency market but again we can see most recently uh, there's a wide swing in currency market maybe we can take a look again but for me uh, equity market i'm going to stay away for a while uh, at least in the equity index space and currency is too volatile for me right now uh, for time being i think my focus will be on energy and uh, maybe perhaps gold market okay commodity will be the focus for me for the short term okay in currency market for dollar tech we can see market went up to 136.67 before plunging to 135.30 and this is very very sharp okay so if we get a bit of a rebound back to 136 to 136.20 levels look out for selling a possibility here i think that will be a good trade here uh, all the way down to 134.40 to 134.85 okay over in the crypto market, we can see crypto is very volatile of late. We can see that the market on the one hour time frame is very obvious. Market went up from just under uh, 27,000 all the way to 30,000 before it pulls back down to 27,300 and then bounce back up to challenge 30,000 only on Sunday. Okay. And then sell back down. So it's been very, very volatile. So for those who have no appetite for this Wall Street, maybe you should stay aside. For those who are brave enough to go back in, perhaps this could actually present a buying opportunity here. Okay. Anywhere between 28,145 to 28,500, look out for buying possibility here. And the market this morning has gone up to 28,434, which is within this bracket. But so far, there is no convincing uh, reversal signal yet. So we will continue to monitor it. If one reversal uh, signal appears within this bracket of prices later in the day, maybe uh, that could be enough uh, to let to go back in again. Okay, we will see. Okay. In the meantime, this is all I have for you. I will update you again tomorrow morning. Bye bye. Take care.